It is late recording this tonight. We'll see how long it goes. It's late. Didn't get after this till it's 1240. Let's just tell you some timestamps. 1240 a.m. recording this. I've not been sleeping at all lately. And because of that, we're going to get into a Kelly's What Are You Into today that continues to be into uh, the television, continues to be into TV shows. I've had time for TV shows because I can't sleep. I think the TV show is going to put me to sleep. It does not. I think closing my eyes is going to put me to sleep. It does not. So we find things to do, like record a podcast at 1242 from the Sean Whitmer podcast coming to you live from the podcasting dungeon. Or, as my buddy Andy so eloquently put it, let me read a text from Andy here. Also, love that you're recording video and posting it to YouTube, but we've got to do something about your studio. You look like a guy in a basement under a bare light bulb writing angry letters to the government. Is he wrong? Spot the lie. Put that laptop down there. Thank you, Andy, for renaming. <laughs> I try to make it like, okay, well, how can we how can we sugarcoat the look behind me? Oh, it's the podcasting dungeon. No. <clears throat> you look like an angry man writing letters to the government. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Today on the podcast, we're going to do something that I haven't done in a very long time. We're going to have someone on the podcast. I haven't done that since COVID. Andy, it's not you. I'm not calling you. I'm going to call you later, but I've got things to talk to Andy about. At some point, if he wants to come on the podcast, I would love it. But we're going to call Brandon in a, in a little bit. It fits into the theme of the beginning of the podcast today, and I wanted to check in with something that he's doing that I think is cool. I mentioned Kelly's What Are You Into? We're going to catch up on a TV show and maybe play a little game with it. That's coming up, and a shout-out to someone who did something very cool. But I wanted to start off today by throwing a shout-out to Matt and Laura. My wife and I got to go on a double date tonight. Man, we haven't been out <clears throat> for a minute. We, we've tried to do a better job last year getting out on dates. My wife's been traveling, traveling so much in the last month that when she's home, we just kind of want to be with the kids at night, and she's tired from traveling, and we've just been chilling. And so we've been having a great time here at the house, but it was nice tonight to get out, and Matt and Laura were cool enough to invite us to go out with them to dinner, and it was great. Went out and got dinner, went back to their house, hung out a little bit, we talked music. It was great because Matt and I got into discussing all of the emo music that we love from the early 2000s, and I, I, I'm trying to get him, get him into the 408 because he was talking about how he likes... You know, all the simple plans, the My Chemical Romances, the Fallout Boys, the Blinks, the insert the rest of those bands that are right in that in that wheelhouse from the early 2000s, late 90s. I'm trying to get him into the 408. So Drez, Johnny D, I'm, I'm doing my job. I'm sharing the good word of the 408, trying to get more people to listen to it. But it was fun getting out. I will say we went to a restaurant where the food is elite. It's great food. It's wonderful. I've never had a bad meal at this place. J. Alexander's is what it's called here in Lexington. It's unbelievable food. They have one of the best French dips I've ever had in my life. Well, tonight I decided to go with the steak tacos. I'm a taco lover. Man, they gave me two. Two come on the platter. And I want to be irritated by it. The problem is I was not, I was not hungry when it was done. It was very filling. They just put so much on two tacos I wish it would have been put on three. This is just me nitpicking. Anytime you order tacos at a restaurant, there needs to be three of them. <laughs> Unless you're ordering individual street tacos, you need to have three or four if I order tacos. Getting two when it was laid on the table was was a real kick to the shorts. Because I thought, you shortchanged me. Are you kidding me? Two tacos? I'm eat these in two bites. You don't realize how much they put in there. And they were so stinking Good. Oh, my gosh. I don't know what they do with the meat at J. Alexander's here in Lexington, but they do magic to it, and it's great. Okay, enough of that. Where, where were we? I just want to say thanks to – shout out to Matt and Laura for, for dinner. Uh, uh, I am surrounded by people in my life, and we're going to get into Brandon with this, who are very motivational. And I love that, and I need that from time to time. I'm surrounded by people. I've, I've been very fortunate. I've talked about it on the podcast I, I've been lucky and fortunate to be surrounded by a really cool group of friends, really cool group of friends. And I just, I, I'm very thankful for them because it's, they're, the, they're extremely important to me. And they're, again, they're, they're very motivational. I'll give you a couple examples on this. Before we dive into what Brandon's doing that's motivational 
and just catch up with B Rose in a few in just a minute or two. Saturday morning, Widmer House. It's the kids. It's me. Anna's gonna get home later that night. We are gearing up for a day to get through a day. What kind of activities we can do without messing up the house? Because I want the house to be in order when Anna gets home. I don't want her coming home to a messy house. So. We're just going to try to get through Saturday. And to start that, I'm just going to take it easy. So Saturday morning, kids wake up. We are living that PJ life on a Saturday morning. Olivia's, I think, down to just her underwear at this point. Huck's in his PJs still. We've got cereal bowls out all over the place. Uh, We've got, I've made cinnamon rolls, the little packaged cinnamon rolls. There's remnants of those things out. I've got cars on TV. We are in complete and total relaxation mode on Saturday morning. Doorbell rings, 8.50. I'm like, doorbell at 8.50? Maybe it's a package? Why is our doorbell ringing? And I walk up to the front, and there they are, the Walker boys. My brother-in-law and two of his, his two oldest kids, have, Chris has run from his house to my house, about a two-mile run. And the boys have ridden their bikes full speed. It's all sweat. The Walker boys have got an early morning workout in. And so I'm like, come on in, because it's fun to have them there. I love, I love seeing them. And I invite them in. And as I'm inviting them in, I'm realizing this is the worst look right now. It's Chris has just, just ran two miles, dripping sweat. He's in great shape. Welcome into the house that has a box of Lucky Charms on the counter, a box of tricks right next to it, Two kids' bowls with a little bit of milk left over, and an extremely noticeable, just freshly poured bowl of tricks that is heaping over the top. A specimen of health, am I, on this Saturday morning? And the Walker boys just come in and put you right in your place, like, hey, lazy butts, let's get up and move. Motivational. It's very motivational. I did not eat the whole bowl of cereal because they came by. I was like, you know what? I'll eat, I'll eat most of it. But I'll leave a couple crumbs down there as proof of improvement. My cousin, very motivational, Ryan, has started his own business. It's it's really good. Ferguson Films, he crushes it. His wedding videos are as good as they get out there. And he runs his own business. That's very motivational. It's it's cool to see. Uh, There was a minute a, a long time ago I thought it wouldn't be cool to start a business by yourself and do it. And I did not, and I I haven't. And anytime I, I think about it, it's like, okay, well, it's an impossible thing. But Ryan did it, and that's a really cool thing. And that's, to me, very motivational that he has done that and and got been successful with it. But Brandon is doing something on a much lighter scale that I find motivational. I think it's really cool. And it started with a text message that he sent me the other morning. But I don't want to get into that with just me. So I thought, let's call Brandon. I think, <coughs> excuse me. I think the video is going to work. I recorded it right after I got done playing basketball the other night. Drove home quickly. So you'll see I'm in my sweat-stained hat, and I'm all, I'm all sweated up from uh, hoops night. But we got Brandon on, and here he is. I haven't had anyone on the podcast since, man, maybe COVID, B-Rose. No way. Really? I think so. I think so. It has been a long spell. And it's probably you. Who was on it? Uh, I miss you. Here, Darnay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, probably. I miss you. I hope all is well in Spokane. Snowed again here today, so we're not out of it yet. They, oh. they go for the groundhog, whatever it is. He was wrong. It was, oh, it was 75 here today. No way, really? Yeah, 75 and sunny. Now, it's going to get colder this week. We're dipping down to the 50s. So, the, Oh, you know, no. I know. I know. Uh, okay, so here's the deal. I wanted to call you, and I haven't called... I haven't talked to anyone on here, so I don't remember how this works, but I was talking earlier in the podcast about being surrounded by people who are very motivating. I've noticed this in my life. I think I need it lately. You are now one of the people who is always motivating, but you're very motivating right now. When you sent me a text message Monday morning, and I thought on my phone, I thought something had happened. I thought I'd missed something because it was early for me. It was, I think, in the four o'clock hour for you. AM, you yes, with, your, sir. with your golf clubs. What in the world were you doing? I hitting the hitting the sim, hitting the simulator to start the day. So you went to I, a golf simulator at five AM in the five AM. Yep. I booked it from five to seven. Figured okay, then I can get ready for work, go to work, have my normal day. 
how to first of all how to go i noticed you never sent me a uh, results well no it went it went pretty well i've i've been really struggling with my irons since okay so we joined a, a it's called the bogey room it's a new simulator here in, in town that's membership based 100 members okay but you can book it whenever you want 24 7 so you just have like a, a phone access code Man. I go up to the door, I hit open the door, it unlocks, I can just play as long as nobody else is already on it or didn't have it booked or whatever. It's in the and valley. So, it's in the valley. Do we want people to know about this? That's fine. It's limited to a hundred members, so we're already almost there. So the bogey room. The bogey room. Okay. And so we've played we've already been there like three times since it opened last week. And once with Jake and Corey, once with with the wife and girlfriend with Kaylee and Jamie once with hang on, hang on real quick Jake again, real quick, your wife, so, so your brother's wife girlfriend, Jamie. your yes. your brother. <laughs> yes. So Brandon is in, is just got married, but he still has a girlfriend and it's sort of a, they're trying to do like a Bravo reality show in the Spokane Valley. Kind of kind of crazy. Yes. Yeah, your brother and his girlfriend. Yes. But we've, my irons were just gone, man. Okay. I ever since we started Bow Room, I played great. Jake and I went to Trailhead, which is the course that you and I played last year yeah. before you left, yep. or one of the times. But we went there, and I had just a great round. I was like, man, maybe golf will be really fun this year. It's going to be great. And then we went to Bogey Room uh, less than a week later, and it was just all gone, and I couldn't hit anything. And so I was really stressed about it. And we're playing our first like real round this Friday at Gamble Sands. At which Gamble is- Sands. Like Gamble Sands, and because they're doing their their opening week deals, and so it's a really reduced rate for the round. But I was like, I can't go to Gamble Sands and not have fun. So I booked the sim for all this week from five to seven a.m. Because I was like, I just got to figure it out this more this week, or else or else I can't play Gamble Sands. You're grinding. You've been golfing a ton over the over the winter. You uh, will constantly send me scores. I love it. I don't get enough of them. I do not get enough of them. And so I I I love it when you do. I love knowing you're doing it because. It was like when you did your podcast and you had the long streak. It did motivate me to want to do it. This is you're built like this, and I I was mentioned. I'm surrounded by people who who motivate me by just being motivated themselves, and I need that in my life. What is the goal this summer on the golf course? The, I, I'd love to get to 85. I I've been okay. right at 90 a bunch last year, so getting under 90 is the first goal. But I think realistically, by the end of the season, I want to be at 85. And then would that be so be Get an 85 or have an average of 85? Get there first, but I want it to be like not a one-time fluke. Like I just had a really good day, you know? Okay. And Avondale's your course, right? Avondale's home home course for you? Although, Avondale's home. You mentioned Trailhead. We played Trailhead. Any, was it, is it Hole 7 that's that's the one that's the, like the most difficult course in golf, right? The, the funny thing about Hole 7 at Trailhead is that's where I hit my hole in one. Crazy. I don't like to talk about it. I, I don't like to bring it up. That's on me. I apologize. Every, Every time we get the whole seven, it seems like it gets mentioned for some reason. It's weird. And I always That's feel bad. So weird. I always feel bad because I know you hate to bring attention to it. So I always forget right. and we get there and it's like, dude, this is the hole. And you're like, ah, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for the round that we don't bring I it th- up. I, I know. I always think people are going to let it slide. And then here we are, hole seven, 155 yards from the white tees into the middle of the green. Uh, you also said you're going to start playing basketball. I we I bought a basketball. We did the weird free throw challenge that you talked about on here, but for Tyler, yeah, where he thought he could hit what do you think, eighty percent, seventy percent? I don't know, way too high. And we played basketball that day. Like me, Jake, and Corey shot around while Tyler was doing his free throws. It was so much fun. So Walmart, because I've been going there for just crazy golf ball deals lately. Okay, they're getting what, what, rid of last balls? year's models what and golf, golf balls. balls. They what? also had crazy sales on basketball. So I was like, I'm going to get a basketball too. What golf balls are you hitting this year? I have a little bit of, I have a couple of different ones to choose from right now, but um, we'll, we'll be too deep to be determined still. Cause I'm not hitting the vice balls that I hit last year. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, I love it. So you've got, you bought a basketball, you're into golf. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy has gone from one of the greatest, one of the greatest creators in the history of the internet to now just full fledged uh, dude. Perfect. We thought we were going to make it creating we did it just wasn't the case do you like so. how i'm still trying though like i love it that like you have realized you realized three years ago you're like yeah this is not worth it and i'm like you know no. what maybe i'll just keep on making videos and podcasts and you've and got a lot more skill stress myself out you because you remember the stresses of thinking of things to talk about every like almost yes. every day 
And I'm just yeah, like, oh yeah. oh yeah, this is great. I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna put up a YouTube video that gets 30 views, and I'm gonna do it again on I'm gonna do it again in two days. I still I, I still, still can't kick it. I still can't kick the itch. You were so smart. Well, because you got very successful in business. You like found I, I got busy in business. No, you got successful. Yours is one of the greatest rises. I I really do believe, Brandon. I'm not just like saying this like I like I do with with Whole Seven at Trailhead. I think your business story is like one of the coolest stories I know about any of my friends. I think it's like one of the coolest things from how you went from starting point to where you are now. You you have to tell it real quick. Starting point for people out there like me who need motivation on the job front. Uh, tell starting point to where you are now. I mean, started at McDonald's as a crew member when I graduated high school. That's when I had to get a job. Right, sports were done. Yep. Got to get a job. Worked my way up through crew to who, the swing manager to the assistant manager. Who would have known sports are back now for you? What sports are back now for you? Sports are back. We're even trying to play tennis too. Jamie is coaching Man. tennis. So we bought a couple of tennis rackets. We bought Mario tennis aces. Oh my goodness. So we're just, we're just brushing up on our tennis rules. You know, does your girlfriend play tennis also? Stop. Just Jamie. Okay. Uh, anyway, so you start as crew member of Mickey D's out of, out of high school. Yep. Yep. Worked up through all the ranks there to general manager was 25 and it was like, okay, what's, what's either next. And then there wasn't a lot of room for growth at that. So my friend, my wedding photographer, Paige, uh, she was at Washington Trust Bank at the time, said, come give the bank a try. Started over fresh there, worked through a bunch of different levels there and managed a couple branches now. Dude, it was, I mean, it's insane. I, you're, you're very likable uh, and just kind and good hard worker, but it's like wild that you had no, like there's no banking experience, right? Outside of... No, right. no banking experience from high school to now you would you you manage the downtown brand are we allowed to say yeah you, i don't live in spokane yeah, so fine. screw off uh you manage it's the downtown, pretty public these days yeah you manage the downtown branch you're like <clears throat> next in line to own the bank right that's a long ways away but i'd like to be there for a long time what is the next what is the next thing <clears throat> you know i'm not sure i'm pretty content right now doing what i'm doing how much just, well, how um, much do you make how much do you make a year I just joined the board of directors as a volunteer at a junior achievement, which does like financial education for schools. So it's cool that I get to be, I'm finding different ways to be involved in the community like that for now, you know? I love it, dude. I love it. Well, I, I just, yeah, talking motivation. I had to call somebody in my life who was like the most motivational as I need it. I just want to play golf all the time. But you're great at it. And I think it's cool though, but like, that's the kind of thing, right? Like obviously your, your work ethic and stuff is, is motivating. But I, the reason I called was because the fact you're dialed in at five o'clock AM before a long work day, and then you get home and you do all the husband stuff, like you're a busy man, but you are, you are waking up early to hit the irons because you have the goal to get into the 85, hit that 85 this summer, make it more of a regular thing. And so you're doing it at 5 AM on weekday mornings. It's crazy crazy well it helps and you'll understand this part of it that's that's the hours of the day that you you're not expected to be a great husband either is a nice part of it so i can get the golf out of the way while jamie's in bed and getting ready for work and then i could be a good husband when i get home still yeah it works out it's why and, and that's why i record the podcast because my kids wake up early so i record the podcast at 10 and 11 midnight here because everyone's asleep Right. You got to yes, do, sir. you got to pick, your, if you're going to do your stuff, you got to pick your spots as a husband and as a the podcast is working this time, it's going to happen. It's not, but I, I'm going to keep on doing it because I really like it. And guys like you motivate me to keep doing it. So I appreciate it. Um, all right. Uh, I, I told you it was going to be five to 10 minutes. We did 10 minutes. We didn't do 30 like we used to always do. Nope. That's pretty good. Do I need to bring guests back on the podcast? I love when you talk to people, especially when you, especially now that you don't see them all the time. Yeah, it might be kind of fun. You know how it is with just trying to get people on Discord and, and get all that set up. See, that's the, the it's a tough setup. That, that's the hard part is doing the actual. Like, it's got to be nice if you're one of the big podcasters who doesn't have to do anything. They're like, just turn your camera on, and they do all the. Someone else produces all of their video stuff, but having to get yep. everything set up is a pain in the rear. All right, brother. Um, Zach's going to win the national championship this year. I think so. I do not. I predicted it before anyone, so I have to stick to it. I think Eags. Oh, so I got how I, far, I, how far, I mean, we have to see the seating and everything. How far are you thinking Eastern makes it this championship. year? Championship. It's the only reason why Gonzaga is not going to win it this year, which would be the okay. most hilarious thing. There are two things. We all that know, would actually we, be the funniest thing in the world. So if that you, happened, you and I, well, you and I love the Zags and we are cheering for the Zags. Mm -hmm. There's only two things in the world 
that would be terrible if for us, for Gonzaga, to not win at all. If Eastern beats them, like where there was an upset, weird upset happened and Eastern beat them, that would be like, uh-oh. If the Cougars beat the Zags in the NCAA tournament. No, we're not even going to entertain that. Like it would be, it, Spokane would riot. It would be it wild would be, because Kook fans are wild. Kook there, fans are riot. It would be some wild. kind of civil war would have oh. to happen at that point. And and Zag fans, I know we're Zag fans, but we're a little like Kook fans are way tougher, way tougher, way more. Just like they they are, are, they are Gonzaga oh. fans is all the Gonzaga kids who got mom Tony and dad's Thompson, money. They're on, soft. Man. The Kook fans will are rowdy. They will bury emotionally. They they'll emotionally bury Gonzaga fans. Gonzaga There's fans just would numbers not, there too. They would not. The Gonzaga Nation yeah, would not rally from that. How many? How many Coog fans are Zag fans though? The vocal ones on Twitter aren't, but there's the Garrett's of the world. They're all Zag fans at heart. I do think there's a bunch. I, it's 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 tough. Uh, it's been funny to me this year. Coogs are good. They're legit good. I finally watched two of their games, and I knew I knew they were ranked. I finally watched them. I'm like, they're good. They're and they're fun to watch. They're fun to watch. Interesting that all of a sudden it you know. They're selling basketball tickets again, and like everyone's like, "Oh, have you noticed that?" A lot of, I mean, a lot of that's posts. How it, that's how it goes. Lot, that's how it goes at Reese Court too. Uh, no baloney. Uh, you know, every year I was posting about Eastern basketball. Every I'm not season. saying okay. you. I'm not saying you. But I'm die- saying that's why there's more tickets being sold that's at true. Reese Court right now. But I do, I do despise the people who are like all of a sudden like Coop basketball, baby lifer, and it's like you've never posted a picture at WSU. Like no. and as an Eastern fan, it's like I feel passion in it, and every year I try to go to games and I. Would, be excited about it and talk about them. And it's like, there's a bunch of Cougar fans on my timelines. They're like, yeah, man, been here. Since I remember day oh, yeah. the days as an Easter at, his, at Eastern when you were guaranteed to win a Rose's pizza. Cause they'd give away 10 of them. And there was less than 10 students. So you were just getting guaranteed to have a Rose's pizza in your hand during the game. When they used to do the I subway remember- sandwich toss. And it was like the cheerleaders looked and they're like, can I throw you two? Right, like, hey, can I just hand you this? You're the only one in the front row right, right. here. <laughs> it's either you or the players, and we've been told we can't give them to the players. So I, I guess you get them. All right, dude, uh, always great talking to you. I, I truly miss you a lot. It's good seeing your face on here. Yeah, you too. Let's do it more often. I'm in anytime. Let's, right, let's just hop on Discord together just for fun, too. Uh, kiss your wife and uh, your girlfriend and all that stuff, and uh, tell, them you, I, tell them I said wait. hi. Yeah. Give me a what's up, YouTube, for the intro really quick. <laughs> Ooh, no, you do it. This is your thing. No, not anymore. It's you now. Come on, bro. Bro's nose was Mine's one of dead. the best. Mine's dead. Come on, hit one time. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Sean Widmer Podcast. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I miss Who's... it. I miss it. You think you'll ever do one episode just out of nowhere? Mm-hmm. I think about it constantly. It just... I see the microphones every day because they're still set up on the table, and yeah. I always think about it. I just won for just one for the, your your. I know, hearts. but then if I do one, then it's like... Wow, he did one again. And I, I have to either go on a run or create some kind of schedule. Well, I think it needs to be a golf. I think you need to follow your golf story this summer. Rare, rarely. Like maybe once a month. All right. Uh, that's it. That's it. Brandon, I love you. Uh, thanks for being motivating to me. And uh, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you soon. I love him. I love him. Okay. Do we need to bring guests back? Do we need to bring guests back? Is that fun? Was that fun? You guys are my report card. You guys are, 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 are always my report card on how the podcast is doing. Is it going well? Do we like how things have been progressing the last few weeks? We're trying to grow the podcast this year. Feedback would be appreciated. We'll get to the comments at the end of the podcast. All the feedback can go into the comments if you want, or you can text me or message me on Instagram, Sean T. Widmer, whatever. But I do love the feedback. We're going to get to the comments, though, in a bit. Before that, I wanted to give a shout-out to Gray. My buddy Gray hit a hole-in-one the other day. And I was I was pumped for him. So Gray, congratulations! Now I've got Ryan's hit a hole in one, Brandon's hit a hole in one, and Gray's hit a hole in one. Of the buddies that I have, who I know have hit hole in ones, those are the three right now. Let's do it, shall we? Kelly's, what are you into? Oh, I've been on a TV kick, man Almighty! I've been on a TV kick, loving myself some television. I cannot sleep at night. Over the last few weeks, I don't know. I've got a lot going on in my head, and I, I'm assuming I, this is. I mentioned the the report card on the podcast. I've been very worried about the podcast the last two weeks. For instance, this episode, I'm worried about it. The intro, the first beginning part, me talking about motivational people. I I don't know how that's going to land. I hope I hope that I don't know. I hope it lands in the right spot. I hope it's interesting in any way. 
but I've been worried about it because my head's been all over the place. I haven't been sleeping, trying to get sleep at night, just with a lot going on here in Lexington. And and because of that, I go lay down, I can't sleep, so I will wake up and I'll watch a TV show. That's kind of how I've been getting back into TV shows and movies. And I fell into, thanks to a couple different people's suggestions, the show The Floor. Someone actually excuse me, mentioned it in the comments, I feel like, a few weeks ago. The Floor. Rob Lowe hosts this game show. And it is a spectacularly put-together game show. If you are a fan of a good game show, The Floor is a must-watch show. I cannot stress this enough. I know I've been pushing shows like crazy. The Bear, I loved it. Deal or No Deal Island, eh, it's, it's okay. The Floor is wonderful. A Floor with 70 tiles on it, 70 people, each person on their own individual tile. And each person has chosen a trivia category that they feel unbeatable at. So maybe it's history. Maybe it's rocks. One of them is birds, computer games, PlayStation. Whatever you think you could head into the show with that you could not be beat in trivia, you bring to the table. The way the game works... One person is picked on all the tiles. They have to challenge someone at an opposing square, a square, a square that is touching their square. And so uh, let's say I've chosen 90s basketball players. And next to me, my square gets chosen. Next to me is someone who's picked comic books. I challenge the comic book person. We both go to the front, and we each have 45-second timers underneath our names. Pictures, normally it's pictures of, let's say, comic, since I'm challenging comic books, comic book characters. Pictures of comic book characters pop up on this screen. I start, I'm the challenger, I start. I have to name the comic book character as fast as I can. As soon as I name it, my timer stops and the other person's timer starts. New picture comes up. As soon as they name it, their timer stops. My timer restarts and I get to go. And whoever's timer runs out first from 45 down to zero, whoever's timer runs out first loses. If you pass on it, well, you can pass on a picture. If you do, they run three seconds off and then fire up the next picture. And that's how all the trivia works. It's great. There's some fill in the blanks. There's a couple other word ones, but a lot of them are picture related, which makes it very enjoyable. But it's fun because when you're at home and you're watching this game show, you can play along really simply great actors and they just show pictures of great actors and you can scream at your TV who that actor is. And if you get it and the person who, who said they were the professional at it, doesn't get it. You feel like a million bucks. If I had beat the comic book character, I take over their square. So now I'm still basketball as my category, but now we're two tiles and the game just continues to progress as other people take out other tiles. And whoever is the last person standing wins the game. And there's a bunch of other rules with it. Someone wins money each night based on how many tiles you own. It is an awesome game. It is an awesome game. And I thought, why not play a game right now on the Sean Woodmer podcast? Because I've always said, as much as I like this to be a, a, a podcast about parenting and and just my life and, and looks into relationships and hopefully is relatable to people so that if you're going through something Maybe hearing me talk about my stuff that we have going on here at the Widmer House makes you just feel a little bit better about potential the potential of your situation really frustrating you. That's the hopes of this podcast. And maybe bring you a smile to your face. And uh, you can see where the, the place where all the, the letters, the angry letters are written. Uh, here's the game. It's called Gimme Five. Gimme Five. I found a story today, fast food story. Like I said, we talk fast food. Top five selling menu items, entree menu items at national fast food chains in 2023. Top five items. So they are not, it's not nuggets. Uh, the article said nuggets were not on the list and, and they were not eligible. Neither were French fries. So we're talking entrees, mainly I think sandwiches. I don't remember if it said sandwiches because I don't have the article up in front of me. I just have the list that I typed out, but I believe it was sandwiches. So what are the top five best-selling sandwiches from the year 2023 at major fast food chains across the United States? This would be the time where you would pause the podcast, take your guesses, and then when you unpause it, I'll give you the answer. So 
Pause. Here we go. Your top five. Number one best-selling entree fast food-wise in America last year, the Big Mac. Two all-beef patties, special sauce, cheese, lettuce, onions, pickles. Is that what it is on a sesame seed bun? I forget how this, the jingle goes. But the Big Mac, number one. It's a great burger. It's a great burger. Undeniably great, the Big Mac. Number two, the Whopper. Now, I was excited about this because I love a Whopper. It is, on, on the list of things I'm about to read you, it's my favorite. And I love a Big Mac, but the Whopper is my favorite. I feel like it is the burger that is the most similar to a backyard barbecue hamburger of any hamburger at a fast food place. Love a Whopper. And in Spokane, when I lived in Spokane, it was always weird because there's not a lot of Burger Kings there. I moved to the south, the east, I don't know where I am, easterly, southerly, Burger King's everywhere. And so it made more sense that the burger sells a ton because there's a ton of there's a ton of Burger Kings here. Number three, Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. Basic. Helps that Chick-fil-A has like what three menu items or something like that. I feel like they have no sandwiches. And so if you go to Chick-fil-A, you're getting the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. It's not like it's not like uh, Mickey D's where the Big Mac is the number one bestseller, but there's a lot of people buying a quarter pounder. A lot of people buying themselves a fish fillet. Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich number three. Number four, that doggone Popeye's chicken sandwich is still killing it. When was that? 2016, 2017? That that Popeye's chicken sandwich shot onto the scene and the world went crazy? That thing is still hanging on. It's the fourth most sold fast food entree in America last year. And number five was the Dave's Single. Dave's Single. Now, I was trying to read in the article. I, I, I believe it was the Dave single. The article almost made it sound like it was singles and doubles together, but then it didn't. So I'm just going to say it's Dave's single. And if you have a problem with it, take it up with the guys who did the survey or did the research on. Not It was not a survey. It was based on sales. But the Dave's single, number five. I need to give Wendy's a better try. Need to do it. Uh, Anna, one of Anna's very good friends, Mary, had posted something about Wendy's, and I, I was talking to, I, I messaged her, and I was like, "Is that a good sandwich?" Because I want to always be sold on Wendy's being great. I, I must have had a bad experience yet when I was younger with Wendy's, and I just always avoid it. But then Ryan loves Wendy's. Scott loves Wendy's. Mary posted something with Wendy's, so every time I see Wendy's, I reach out to the person. And I'm like, "Is it good?" Even though I've been told a million times, it's like I can I need that reassurance that it's great. Okay, there they were. And that game was called Give Me Five. All right, enough of that. Let's look at some comments, shall we? We've got one off of YouTube, and it's from Curdy Bear. And she says, I've been binge watching Vanderpump Rules since December, and I'm only on season eight, but it's so good. Curdy, my wife will be so excited to hear you're in on Vanderpump. One, my wife is just always excited to hear about you, but she'll be she'll be loving that. She might even text you about it because she is all in on Vanderpump Rules. That was the show she got into last summer, beginning of last summer, and just absolutely consumed so much of it immediately. Dire- just directly into the veins. It was Vanderpump Rules on our TVs nonstop for about three weeks so she could catch up, and she loves Vanderpump Rules. So I got to tell you, the little bit that I've watched, I enjoyed I like I like the trashy reality TV shows. I like Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I'm here for all the Monica stuff. But Vanderpump Rules was good. Let's go to Spotify where Yvonne says, I binged watched Parenthood all seasons in about a week. That was about eight or nine years ago. Need to check out The Bear. Excited. Yeah, Yvonne, if you check out The Bear, let me know. I really, again, really, really liked it. I would love to know what you think about it. I've heard Parenthood was great. Someone did reach out to me on Instagram and said, is it the good book? Dang it, I forget what it, what it's called. The good place? Something maybe the something place. The something place. Is it called the good place? Was that a show? The good place. <clears throat> I think it was a good place. Yeah, Kristen Bell, D- Ted Danson said the binge watch The Good Place is a really good binge watch. So Yvonne Parenthood. My buddy Max loved that show. It is one that I probably should look into because I've never seen it. Two of the comments come from the website, seanslife.com. You can go there and get your comments in. Ian says this. So fun fact before my comment. A lot, if not all, deli beef is all brisket. 
shows I've uh, oh, let's get to that real quick before we get to the shows. All brisket. So deli beef is all brisket. Ian makes a killer brisket. He also was talking to me about how bacon is made uh, on over on TikTok, and I was I was very interested in that as well. But yeah, there's a fun fact. Not, uh, all, a lot, if not all, deli beef is all brisket. All right, shows I've binged recently. Here we go. Here's Ian's list of shows he's binged. Records of Bastard Magic Instructor. Anime anime show names are wild. Anime show titles are some of the craziest titles of anything that is titled. They take a jumble of words and just put them together. It's almost like with some of the animes, it's like they took the last four days of Wordle and just put them into a sentence, and then off they go with their anime. Ian has also watched Eminence in Shadow, another anime. Guy's Family Road Trip. He's seen clip, and then he said, "I've seen clips of the bear. It's on my list to watch. I'll bump it up so we can both chat about it." Yeah, do it, dude. I, and and be honest with me. If you hate it, let me know. Ron says this final comment of the day: the bear is so good. The Christmas episode in season two, that episode is called Fishes, was one of the most tense episodes I've ever seen. That is one of the most uniquely cool TV episodes I've ever seen. That that is a wildly good television episode fishes and i thought at the time this is going to be the best episode of this of this show until the next episode happened and the next episode after that christmas episode i thought was perfect a perfect tv episode uh ron went on to say we just oh okay good we just finished mr and mrs smith on amazon prime i'm a big donald glover fan so i thought it was excellent much better than the movie also, check out Atlanta if you haven't seen it. Ron, I love Donald Glover. I loved Atlanta. Loved it. My celebrity crush is on Atlanta. Zazie Beats. That is my celebrity crush. And she is on Atlanta. So, yes, I'm a big Atlanta guy, and I love Donald Glover. I have been interested in that Mr. and Mrs. Smith TV show. I have not tried it out yet. I actually hadn't heard much about it. So this is kind of the first review I'm hearing about Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Ron, I'm going to have to check that out. I appreciate it. Okay, it's 105 a.m. I got to get some sleep. Goodbye.